Yes, yes, yes. You guys really seem to love watching videos involving the X100, so let's talk about it again, I guess. So with the increasing unavailability of the X100 on the brand new market and the gross inflation of the X100 bodies on the secondhand market, it's time to explore one of the best alternatives to the X100 series. Yes, I'm talking about the Ricoh GR3 and the GR3X. To a lesser extent, even the GR2, depending on what your use case is, but I'm gonna to try to focus on the GR3 and the GR3X versus the X100, mostly the, the later variants, the X100V, of course, the ever popular, and then the X100F as another alternative. The shooting experience is wildly different. Uh, the shooting philosophy, the approach, all that is wildly different between these two cameras. However, there is enough overlap in everything else outside of the shooting experience that makes them worth comparing and considering, especially if you're looking for an alternative or you can't get your hands on an X100, but once some of the feature sets, the GR3 series does have to offer the kind of overlap, particularly if you're looking for something that is extremely lightweight, very compact, and just a great everyday camera for personal documentary work, um, street shooting, and just everyday shooting, really, everyday life, if you will. Um, both of these cameras kind of fall squarely into that, that pocket. And so for that reason, it is worth taking a look at the GR series as an alternative if you are interested in some of the things that the X100 series has to offer but cannot get your hands on one. So let's start off with the size comparison between these two bodies. When it comes to the physical size, the Ricoh GR is a truly pocketable camera. Uh, thanks to that lens that retracts into the body and the slim nature and the fact that it doesn't have a built-in viewfinder, they're able to make this thing just extremely pocketable, can fit into literally any pocket. Meanwhile, the X100 series of bodies can only fit into some pockets comfortably. And I do mean that it does actually fit into some, even some front pockets and some of the flannels I have, especially when I just leave it as is and just throw the um, included lens cover on it. However, that Ricoh GR3 with the, with the lens protector built in when it retracts to the body can truly fit into any pocket, anytime, anywhere. And for that reason, it is the ultimate portable camera. It kind of has a leg up on the X100 series when it comes to pocketability and portability. And if you're looking for an everyday camera, that kind of just that that's that's really what it's all about is can you take this thing comfortably everywhere and the rico uh provides no barriers to entry when it comes to everyday pocketability so that's something worth considering if you're interested in the x100 because you plan on bringing it everywhere we'll take a look at the rico gr because it offers that to the 10th degree in my opinion so let's talk about the actual handling of these two cameras and this is largely going to be a personal preference thing as well um, and really what we're talking about is the physical dials and knobs on the Fujifilm bodies versus the more utilitarian layout of the Ricoh GR. Both handle more than well enough to get the shot, but Ricoh has snap focus, which is fantastic for street shooters who enjoy zone focusing. You set your aperture for the deep depth of field, you set your snap distance to your comfortable shooting distance, and you just go. It's easier to adjust that distance than manually focusing with the DOF meter on the X100 series. I wish the GR series had a tiltable back LCD, however. This would have greatly improved the usability of this camera, especially since it lacks an integrated viewfinder. The X100V has the tiltable back LCD, which is a major plus for the Fuji. And this makes the X100V the most flexible out of the bunch with regards to shooting style. You can use the OVF, you can use the EVF, you can use the combination of OVF with the EVF box in the corner of it, or you can just use that back LCD with the option to tilt. While on the GR, you're limited to that back LCD only, and you do not have an option to tilt. You can, of course, add a standalone optical viewfinder to the GR, but that's really just for framing guidelines and is not coupled in any way with the camera itself, and therefore you won't get any shooting information within that viewfinder like you do with the optical viewfinder of the Fuji X100 series. Another thing worth mentioning when comparing the GR3 bodies specifically to the X100 bodies is that the GR3 lost the built-in flash of the GR2, and the X100 series, all of them have built-in flashes. 
Now, these aren't award-winning flash modules by any stretch of the imagination, but it is nice to have a built-in flash if you're in a pinch and need to add a pop of flash into the scene, uh, whereas on the GR series, that's not going to be an option. For me, this is not really a deal breaker or much of a factor personally because I actually prefer uh, external flash any day of the week. However, it is nice to have if you didn't happen to bring your flash and you find yourself in a situation where using that built-in flash makes sense. So a plus to the Fujifilm there, but not a deal breaker if you're looking at the GR as an alternative. Now, really, when it comes to the handling of these cameras, I can't really crown a winner. Like I said, I enjoy using the Fuji more. However, the GR is really set up for a great one-hand operation. It's extremely customizable, as is the Fuji. Uh, but a lot of things just kind of make sense when it comes to, especially for street shooting, and so it really just depends what your preference is and the shooting experience you prefer. Do you prefer fiddling with the dials and knobs and giving you that more manual analog feel? Or do you want that function over form? Everything right within the reach of your just one thumb on the right side uh, and set your snap focus distance, customize your functions and just really be able to shoot and go. Uh, it's really the ultimate snap shooter camera, really the ultimate quick ninja uh, street camera so it really depends on what you're looking to do how involved you want to be within that shooting process um, i can't crown a winner for you there that's going to be something that's going to be your personal preference now moving on to the build this one is kind of interesting i think in hand if you handle both you'll kind of feel like the rico gr uh, has a better build quality or is more rugged or robust just because it's dense for its size at least however in my experience and in practice, I think that the Fuji X100 series of bodies has the better build quality here. Now let me explain why. So as I mentioned in my previous GR3 review, my GR3 had issues with the back jog dial getting lint and um, dust or whatever stuck in the, that back rotating jog dial, causing it to jump around an operation. Now I was able to rectify this issue by using some a spray electronic contacts cleaner and just spraying that in there and rotating the dial. So shout out to whoever suggested that in the comments. Uh, you are absolutely the real MVP. However, I've never had any issues with any rotating back jog dials in any of the previous bodies I've ever shot that had them. And I think it's a little inexcusable for a camera of this price to have that issue. Now, if this camera had weather sealing, I think that would kind of address that issue, uh, which the X100V does offer when you add that lens filter on the front it's fully weather sealed once that front element is protected. And so that is that is a plus of the Fuji versus the Ricoh GR. Um, and it's worth mentioning in the build quality section. Even with that aside, the actual buttons on my four-way jog dial, the actual directional buttons, the simulated D-pad essentially, that whole button just fell out on my camera. Uh, once again, inexcusable for a camera of this price point. Uh, so with that, I would have to give the build quality to the Fujifilm X100 line of bodies. I've owned a handful of these throughout the series, and I've never had any build quality issues on any of them. So with that, I think even though the Ricoh GR is a very well-built pocket camera, um, initially, I think over time, the build quality issues with it have me giving the tilt to, or the nod to the uh, Fujifilm bodies. Uh, but So that's worth mentioning in this comparison that... I don't think the build quality is as good as Fuji, sorry. All right, let's talk a little bit about expandability. Now I know that is a weird thing to bring up when we're talking about fixed lens cameras. However, both of these cameras do offer lens conversions uh, that take your native uh, field of view and focal length and allow you to expand it in one direction or the other, and in some cases, both. Uh, so when it comes to that, the Ricoh GR3, offers a wide angle lens conversion or conversion lens, um, which takes it from a 28 millimeter field of view equivalent to down to a 21 uh, millimeter full frame field of view equivalent. The Ricoh GR3X has a teleconverter that takes it from a 40 millimeter equivalent to a 75 millimeter equivalent. Uh, so there are the options you have on the Ricoh GR3 and GR3X. Now the X100 series, all of them have um, the option to go in both directions. So you can go with the wide uh, conversion lens or the tele conversion lens, taking your 35 millimeter full frame field of view equivalent and taking it down to a 28 millimeter equivalent or up to a 50 millimeter equivalent, uh, which is, I think, a more flexible shooting range. 
uh, when it comes to compared to one of the GR3 models, of course, uh, you get three focal lengths versus the two focal length options on, on the GR. So obviously that's a win and not really com not really a direct comparison to the GR. Uh, but it's nice that the option does exist. And then once again, like anything else I've talked about so far, this is going to be a matter of personal preference uh, and the focal lengths that you prefer to shoot, which I will get into next when we talk about the actual lenses. So if you're going to talk about the X100 versus the GR series as an alternative, you have to talk about the focal lengths because they, they don't actually offer a direct equivalent focal length as an alternative. So really you have the question of, do you prefer 18 millimeter, which is a 28 in full frame field of view or 35 millimeter equivalent or a 40 millimeter equivalent? Uh, all of those have slight differences that may or may not jive with your personal shooting style. Uh, lucky for me, I actually love and appreciate all three of those focal lengths. I love a good 28. 35 is like one of the most flexible and the, just the ultimate focal length for me personally. And 40 is, while very similar to a 35, is also very enjoyable for me to shoot. I actually prefer a 40 to a 50 which is going to be a super unpopular opinion. I'll get thumbs down for that, but it is what it is. Hate me all you want for that. So that's going to be a personal preference, right? And really depends on your shooting style, how comfortable you are getting closer to subjects, how much compression you want, um, just the style of photography that you want to take. Uh, me personally, 28 is about as wide as I like to shoot most of the time. Every now and then 24 is also not bad, but I'm not a super wide angle shooting guy. So 28 is actually perfect. 35, like I said, is super flexible for me. And then um, 40 gives me a little bit more telly, a little bit more compression, allows me to isolate my subjects a little more. Uh, great for portraits, but still being a good walk around lens. I prefer it to 50 because 50 is, is a little bit more limiting to me. Uh, but that's just a personal preference. So it's going to be hard to compare that uh, and tell you if this is a viable alternative for you. If I don't know your shooting style, I can't make that decision for you. But for me, all three of those are workable focal lengths, I think. And uh, which also kind of makes this a viable alternative. You just have to make the decision if you're looking at something outside of the X100. If you're more on the telly side and you want to get closer to that 35 field of view, get the 40, get that GR3X. If you prefer to go wide, like let's say you were going to pair your X100V with the wide conversion lens and primarily shoot it that way, it probably makes more sense to get a GR3 anyways for that uh, because it's actually going to remain more pocketable without having to put that wide conversion lens on your X100. So this just comes down to personal preference. There really can be no winner here. You make the choice that best shoots your shooting style and your use case that you have in mind. With focal lengths out of the way, the next thing to consider is what's more important to you, the F2 on the X100 or the F2.8 aperture paired with the IBIS on the GR3 series of bodies. Now this is an interesting comparison and it really just comes down to why you would even be asking yourself this question. Uh, do you value the F2 because you're looking for uh, low light gathering capabilities? If that's the reason why you're interested in the F2 of the Fujifilm, then you gotta, you gotta remember that the in-body image stabilization in that GR is actually very, very useful when it comes to getting usable handheld shots at um, lower light levels. Uh, probably more usable than having F2 without that in-body image stabilization. Uh, Cause you definitely get more than one stop of stabilization when it comes to the GR3 series of bodies. Uh, I'm able to handhold this down to one eighth of a second comfortably and get a nice, sharp, well-exposed image in lower light situations. I cannot really reliably go down that low with this, even with the F2 aperture. And so if you're interested in the F2 aperture in this small compact body for light gathering reasons, the Ricoh GR is a real alternative that you should look at. Now, if you're interested in the F2 to help isolate your subjects, you know, uh, when shooting things like portraits, then you might want to really be comparing to the GR3X specifically because F2.8 on a 28 millimeter is not really going to give you a whole lot of separation unless you're really close to your subject, which you don't necessarily want to do if you're shooting portraits with a 28. Uh, but with that 40 mil 2.8 versus the F2.35 um, on the X100, that's going to be a tough decision for you to make, I think. Um, 
I don't know if I can really help you there because I don't actually own the GR3X. Um, so yeah, good luck with that decision. One thing I can comment on if you're looking at the GR as an alternative is the sharpness of these lenses that we're discussing. Uh, which lens is sharper, the Fujifilm or the GR series lenses? Uh, and I'm gonna keep this pretty short and sweet. The GR lenses are definitely sharper than Fujifilm's offering from what I've seen. Uh, that goes from wide open to stop down. Like, I don't know how Ricoh is able to keep their lens sharpness so high in such a compact um, lens, especially one that retracts into the body. It's collapsible. It's pretty crazy to me. Um, yeah, it, it, it really just edges it. And that includes up to the X100V, which they improved the sharpness on of that Fujinon F2 lens. Uh, the GR is still just a little bit sharper um, at every aperture, at every distance. But to be honest, it doesn't really matter because all of these cameras are definitely sharp enough for 99% of our use cases, especially if you're just posting your digital photos online. I would not use that as a deciding factor between them, the lens sharpness. With the one caveat that if you're really looking at this as an everyday uh, camera, any model of the X100 prior to the X100V, so that's F all the way down to the original, did have the tendency to kind of have a soft glow when you focus closer to the minimum focusing distance, whereas the Ricoh GR3 can focus really close and that sharpness remains even when it's like basically at minimum focusing distance on this camera. All right, so a quick editor's note here. In this section of the video, when I was talking about the softness and the haziness of the X100 cameras when shot at close to minimum focusing distance, I was referring to shooting them wide open at F2. Now, if you stop that lens down to F4 and beyond, a lot of that hazy glow kind of goes away. And to be honest, if you're shooting a macro or a close focus shot, you should stop your lens down anyways to get a deep depth of field and to get sharper focus regardless. But it's worth mentioning uh, because by comparison, if you shoot the Ricoh GR wide open at even closer minimum focusing distance than the X100 can uh, shoot at, it's still much sharper. So all that still stands, but I thought I'd mention that. Stop the lens down a little bit and it clears a lot of that up. And with that said, let's get back to the video. Neither one of these are obviously dedicated macro machines by any stretch of the imagination, but if you're kind of touting these as your everyday camera, you might end up taking pictures of small details or tiny objects or food or something like that, for instance, at a close distance. And that's worth noting that if that matters to you, then the GR is going to edge out the X100 series when it comes to close-up sharpness. Uh, I do think that they address that in the X100V. This is not really a deal breaker, but it's worth mentioning here. Okay, the last thing I will touch on when it comes to the lenses of the GR versus the X100 series is the autofocus speed. Uh, we'll keep this short and sweet as well. To simply put, the Fujifilm is typically faster. Um, they have better autofocus algorithms or the lens moves faster, whatever it is, the end result is that it typically acquires focus a little bit faster than the Ricoh GR does. Uh, that's not to say that the Ricoh GR is not serviceable. Um, in good light, it's definitely good. Uh, in lower light, it will absolutely struggle. But if you work around those limitations and kind of use high contrast points within your frame to focus, to acquire focus, it's not really as much of an issue. But if we're going to compare them, the Fujifilm autofocus algorithms, particularly in the X100F and V, are going to blow the Ricoh GR3 out of the water in those extreme conditions of focusing. Uh, once again, not really an issue if you're doing street or something like that. Um, and your zone focusing this is not an issue at all. If you're using snap focus on the Ricoh GR, that's faster than anything you can do with the Fuji. Uh, so it really depends on what you're trying to do. Let's move on to the aspects of the sensor for both of these cameras. And I'm going to read this off here because it's a lot to remember. But um, essentially, if you're comparing the more modern bodies, the X100V has 26 megapixels, whereas the F has 24 megapixels. The GR3 series of cameras both have 24 megapixels. Uh, but if you're comparing older generations, the GR2 has 16 megapixels versus the uh, X100, the original has 12. The S and the T both have 16 megapixels as well. So it really depends on what series of um, camera you're going to buy, what generation you're gonna buy and compare here. 
but I think that any of these are useful uh, for most of our use cases, especially once again for posting digital images online. And all of these can be printed up to reasonable print sizes uh, with obviously the higher megapixel, uh, the higher resolution images giving you an edge the bigger you go, I think. Um, but it's really a non-issue. It's not really worth talking about or comparing here. So let's just get that out of the way when it comes to the sensor and let's move on to something a little bit more interesting in my opinion. So let's talk about the color uh, rendering of both of these sensors in these cameras. Uh, and really that's not just a sensor thing. Obviously there's a lot that goes into the image pipeline that produces the colors from the sensors in our cameras. Uh, but between these two cameras, it's very different nonetheless. Fuji is kind of known for their in-camera color processing and film simulations, but a lot of people don't know that Ricoh also offers very good in-camera color processing and film simulations as well, or uh, color profiles, I should say, namely the positive film profile. Those are fantastic color profiles. And at times I wish I had them available on other cameras besides the Ricoh. Uh, meanwhile, you know, everyone has known Fuji for all of these film simulations from Provia, Classic Chrome, Astia, um, uh, Pro Negative, right? You have your, your color negative. You're not going to get all of that on Rico, but you do get a little bit of interesting color profiles and a, a large uh, flexibility in, in range and customization of what you can do with those color profiles on the Rico side. Uh, additionally, Rico also has fantastic black and white uh, profiles in their cameras. Uh, I kind of tend to bounce between some of the the higher contrast profiles and also the soft black and white. I kind of like both for different reasons in different situations. And I actually think their black and white processing, I kind of prefer it to Fujifilm. So it's really on Fujifilm, you just get the monochrome or Acros with uh, different color filters on them. I think there's a little bit more flexibility on the Ricoh side. So if you're really interested in shooting black and white JPEGs, for, in, for instance, the Ricoh is actually a very viable alternative there and demands a little bit more respect than what is given, honestly, uh, in my opinion. What I will mention is something I've always loved about Fujifilm cameras is the ability to process your raw files in camera and get different JPEGs out of it without having to touch your computer, right? You can take the raw file you shot and process it under different film simulations and change the, the shadows and the highlights and the white balance and shift the white balance and do all kinds of cool things and generate a JPEG in camera and shoot that over through Wi-Fi to your phone and instantly share that um, as if you shot it that way. Uh, I love that it has that. I wish all camera brands had that. Interestingly enough, as an alternative, Rico offers the same exact thing to a certain degree. Uh, the way you process the images in camera is a little bit different. It's a little bit more clunky in my opinion, uh, less responsive, but it's not bad at all. And the fact that it's there is great and I love it and I wish all cameras had it. So if you're looking at this as an alternative, the Rico offers that it's just as usable as the one in the Fujifilm cameras uh, and it's worth considering for sure. Since we are talking about one versus the other, if I had to pick which one has better colors and, and better color processing um, options, I would still have to give the edge to Fuji. Uh, there is a bigger community behind it when it comes to kind of sharing uh, the film recipes and whatnot. There are some that do exist for the Ricoh series of cameras, but there's a little bit less flexibility within that processing pipeline, at least in camera. So I have to give the edge to Fuji, but Ricoh is a really solid showing here. And if you can't get your hands on the Fuji, the Ricoh will not disappoint in that regard, uh, I don't think. So take that for what you will, and let's move on to the next point, which is going to be so ISO performance is uh, kind of interesting and it kind of surprised me a little bit. Initially, I thought that the uh, Fuji X100 series would beat the GR3 just because the X100 series, I think, is a little bit newer than the GR3. Um, but when I actually started to compare things and both in my personal library and things I saw online, uh, I started to paint a little bit of a different picture. So what I noticed when I started to compare um, the noise profiles and detail within high ISO shots is that the Rico seemed to retain more detail at high ISO. Uh, it's not really what I expected. And I'm sure that has a little bit to do with a point I made earlier and that their lenses are sharper. Uh, but this seems to not smear things as much in higher ISOs as the Fuji's do in my opinion. 
uh, and seems to retain a lot more of that detail, which is great. However, where the Fuji does excel, in my opinion, is kind of re retaining that color accuracy at higher ISOs. I did notice that the Ricoh seemed to shift colors a little bit more, whereas the Fuji kind of retained a more accurate true to life color. And so it really just depends on what you value more. Uh, cause apparently we can't have both. You have to choose between, do you really value, um, retain the detail or do you value retain the color accuracy? Uh, for me personally, in my personal opinion, I will take the detail over the color accuracy. Uh, I'd rather things not get all uh, smeared and, and, and mushy because that's kind of when it gets too extreme, it starts to look like a cell phone image in my opinion. And it starts to, the image just starts to break down. So if you can retain that detail, I'd rather have that. If the colors can't be addressed in post, I simply try to make it black and white. And if the subject matter is compelling enough, it'll still shine through. Otherwise it probably wasn't an interesting enough shot anyways. So give me the detail over the color accuracy and high ISO any day. The Rico kind of wins here. And if you're looking for an alternative to the Fuji film, surprisingly, it doesn't fall short here. It's worth considering. Okay, so if we were to wrap up what we talked about here, uh, the shooting styles of these two cameras is very different. Two very different uh, philosophies, viewfinder, no viewfinder, um, tiltable LCD, no tiltable LCD, dials and knobs versus well-placed buttons on a small compact body that's completely pocketable in any pocket versus somewhat pocketable sometimes on the other hand. And I didn't talk about it, but the Fuji film is just a beautiful, beautiful camera. The Ricoh GR looks a lot more utilitarian, but for that reason, it kind of fades into the background a little more and functions more like just your everyday normal tool. Uh, so it really depends, I think, is what the overall message is. It depends on what you what you really value in the camera. Are you valuing it as a, as a kind of, you know, adorned piece of of jewelry, which I think a lot of people who are kind of driving the popularity of this camera now, that's really what they're interested in. It's just a trendy hipster looking camera um, that everyone online is talking about and that's why they want it. But if you're, if this caught your attention and you really wanted to use it because it takes great images and some of the other characteristics of um, that this camera also shares, such as being a great pocketable everyday camera, this is really a viable alternative. If you're not looking for something that's super hype and you're really just in it for the images and usability of, of, of something that you want to take with you everywhere, every day, you should really take a strong look at the Ricoh GR series. The question is going to come down to if the focal lengths that they offer are what you're looking for, if um, the shooting style that it offers uh, is what you're looking for. This is very much a one-handed operation everything kind of falls where you need it to fall within that right hand uh, with the exception of one button on the left side which you won't really need to use that often and so if this fits your shooting style and what you're looking to do i would really say this is absolutely worth it and the prices of this are not inflated like they currently are for the x100 i mean you're talking about paying probably half the price of what you're going to get at x100 F or V for right now to get either a used or new Ricoh GR body, depending on what country you live in. Um, and that's a very compelling argument. Like I said, if you're not getting it for the looks, if you're not getting it for the hype, if you're not getting it for the specific dials and knobs and that shooting experience, if you're getting it for everything else that camera has to offer, this offers pretty much all of that. And in some cases, then some, depending on your style of shooting, at uh, half the price essentially. And it's definitely worth your consideration. And please, please, please do not go crazy and pay over retail for this camera or pay an exorbitant amount for a used body. Just wait for the prices to come down uh, and really just evaluate why it is you want that camera and ask yourself, is there an alternative, whether it be this or something else that offers you almost everything else that you want that you can get for a better price right now. And maybe if it's still not meeting your needs, when the prices of this comes back down, maybe you sell one and get the other. I would be more than happy with this. And I would definitely not be looking to pay twice the price or 50% higher or 25% over retail for a new body. That's a little crazy to me. And definitely for the used bodies. Uh, please don't do that. With that, you know, y'all stay safe, stay warm out here. It's, it's getting pretty cold here in the US. Uh, at least the part that I'm in. 
and, and, you know, hopefully I will see you guys on the next one as always. Peace.